Good day, everybody. This is Dr. Sanjay Sanyal, Professor Department Chair. So this is going to be a demonstration of sole of the foot. This is a prone cadaver. This is the left side. I'm standing on the left side and I'm holding the camera. So this structure that we see here, we have already separated out the plantar aponeurosis. And I'm going to remove it just now. And you can see all the slips of the plantar aponeurosis going to the respective digits. This is the medial size, so this is the great toe. Second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe. So now I'm going to remove the plantar aponeurosis. We have already made a separate video describing the plantar aponeurosis. So I'm removing it now. And we can see it very clearly here, separately, with all the slips of the plantar aponeurosis. Now let's take a look at the muscles. And we shall take the muscles layer by layer. Since we are standing on the lateral side, I will start with the lateral side first. This muscle that we see here, this is the abductor digiti minimi that we have cut here at the tendon. This is the whole muscle, the abductor digiti minimi. I'm going to reflect the abductor digiti minimi now so that you can see the muscle underneath which I shall describe just now. So this whole thing is the abductor digiti minimi. Let's come to the medial side. We have a similar muscle on the medial side and that is this muscle here. This is the abductor hallucis brevis. Now this abductor hallucis brevis has got a very important clinical correlation and to understand that we have to look at the proximal aspect which we have partially cut here. The, the origin of the abductor hallucis is quite fibrotendinous and it forms a very tough structure and passing under that we have the medial plantar nerve which is running here and this is the medial plantar nerve. The medial plantar nerve can get entrapped under the origin of the abductor hallucis and can produce the condition known as jogger's foot where there will be foot pain and there will be loss of sensation and numbness, tingling and paresthesia on the medial three fourths of the sole of the foot and the medial three and a half digits. I am going to show you the branches of the medial plantar nerve shortly. So that is the next muscle in the superficial layer one compartment of the sole of the foot. And the third muscle is this middle one here. This also we have cut at the origin. This is the flexor digitorum brevis. And I'm going to lift up the flexor digitorum brevis. These are the tendons of the flexor digitorum brevis going to the respective fingers. And we can see them more clearly in this picture. And along with that, we can see the branches of the medial plantar nerve here. So these are the fibers of the medial plantar nerve, which I mentioned just a little while back. Now I shall reflect this. Now we'll come to layer number two. Layer number two consists of two muscles Two tendons. So let's take these tendons first. These are the tendons of the flexor digitorum longus and here we can see only three slips going to the middle three digits. This is the flexor digitorum longus and the other one is if I bring this back here you will be able to see another long tendon here. This is the flexor hallucis longus. Both these tendons they started from behind the ankle on the medial side. This is the tendon of the flexor digitorum longus. And this is the tendon of the flexor hallucis longus. When I exert traction here, we can see it is moving. We have two other muscles. And that muscle we can see here. This is the quadratus plantae. The quadratus plantae takes origin from the calcaneus. And it's a quadrangular shaped muscle. It takes a dual origin from the calcaneus. And it gets inserted onto the flexor digitorum longus. And we can see that very clearly here. And not only that, the flexor digitorum longus also is giving origin to these small, small muscles that we can see here. These are the lumbrical muscles. In this particular cadaver, because we have only three slips going to the flexor digits, we have three lumbricals, one, two, and one on this side, the third. These are the three lumbricals that we can see here. So these are the muscles of the layer number two. Now let's come to a muscle in the layer number three. Again, we will start from the lateral aspect. This is the flexor digiti minimi brevis, which I have lifted up here. This is the flexor digiti minimi brevis. And on this side, this is the flexor hallucis brevis. And we can see it is getting inserted by means of two slips on either side of the base of the proximal phalanx through a lateral and a medial sesamoid bone. And ideally, between these two is supposed to pass the tendon of the flexor hallucis longus. But in this case, we notice that the tendon of the flexor hallucis longus is passing laterally to it because this cadaver has got a small degree of hallux valgus. 
Hallux valgus is when the toe is bent laterally at the metatarsal phalangeal joint, the first metatarsal phalangeal joint, in which case the tendon of the flexor hallucis longus tends to deviate laterally, and that is what we see in this particular cadaver. That is layer number three, the flexor hallucis brevis, the flexor digiti mini brevis, and deep inside we have a third muscle that we can barely see, and that is the adductor hallucis. The adductor hallucis is also in layer number three. Then we come to layer number four. In layer number four, we can see only three muscles here. Just medial to the flexor, DGT mini we previous, we can see these muscle slips here. This is one slip, this is another slip, and this is another slip. These are the three plantar interosseae. Additionally, which we cannot see this dissection, will be the four dorsal interosseae. They will also be in layer number four. And finally, also in layer number four, we will have the tendon of this muscle, this is the fibularis longus tendon, and we will have the tendon of this muscle here, which is the tibialis posterior tendon. These two also constitute layer number four, and which are the ones which hold the transverse arch of the foot in place. Having mentioned this, now let's take a quick look at the neurovascular structures. So this is the medial plantar nerve, which I had mentioned earlier, and I picked it up here. And when we pick up the medial plantar nerve, we can see that it is going under the origin of the abductor hallucis, which I mentioned earlier. And this is where it gets entrapped to form what is known as jogger's foot. We have completely dissected it out and we can see it is supplying the sole of the foot and it supplies the medial three and a half digits. The great toe, the second toe, the third toe and part of the fourth toe. Additionally, the medial plantar nerve supplies, so therefore it supplies more skin. Additionally, it supplies less muscle, and I have made a simple rule to understand which are the muscles which are supplied by the medial plantar nerve, the so-called rule of one. It supplies the muscles of the great toe. The medial plantar nerve supplies muscles of the great toe, namely, it supplies the abductor hallucis, the flexor hallucis brevis, it supplies the flexor digitorum brevis, and it supplies the first lumbricle. It supplies the muscles of the great toe, it supplies the layer of the first layer of muscles, and it supplies the first lumbricles, the layer of one, one, one rule. Now let's take a look at the lateral plantar nerve. And we can trace the lateral plantar nerve from here. This is the lateral plantar nerve. The lateral plantar nerve runs laterally between layers number one and two, and then it continues, and then it goes between layers three and four. And here we can see the lateral plantar nerve is accompanied by a thrombosed vein here. And this thrombosed vein is the one which was responsible for producing the blackish discolorations on the plantar aponeurosis. This lateral plantar vein, this is highly thrombosed here, and it is going deep inside also. This is the course of the lateral plantar. Lateral plantar supplies the only the lateral one-fourth of the sole of the foot and it also supplies the lateral one-half digits and it supplies all the remaining muscles. So this is the full course and distribution of the muscles in the neurovascular structures in the sole of the foot. Thank you very much for watching. This is Dr. Sanjay Sanyal signing out. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. Have a nice day. Please like and subscribe.